Okay, so we're going to talk about how to clean up our green screen. And uh, as, I, as I said, After Effects has a ton of different methodologies for doing that, a, d a lot of different ways of doing it, some far more complicated than others. Um, I'm going to try and keep this simple because if you have a decent green screen, nine times out of ten, what I'm going to show you today will take care of everything. Um, so you shouldn't have to worry about some of the more complex and complicated uh, ways of doing it. But uh, you never know. <clears throat> So if I go and just take a look at my um, layer here, whoops, that's not, is that the right one? Um, let's make sure I have that on there. Okay, I do have the key light. So one of the things that I can do is go to my, um, my effects window, which is, uh, there, just double click on there, FX controls, double click on the key light, and you can see uh, here what's going on, and then you can see final result. And one of the things you can do is you can change this, and you can, ch you can change the way that it shows the, the masking process. So status is actually a really good way of checking how things are looking. Does it do it? No, see, it doesn't do it here. So it only does it in the composition. <clears throat> and so what this is telling me here is it's giving me the status of my mat. Black is completely transparent. Anything that's gray means that it is semi-transparent. And anything that is white means that it's opaque. So the first thing that you should notice about this as we're looking at this is I've got a lot of areas that are semi-transparent. This is bad. Really what, you, what I should see here as far as my mask is concerned is I should see basically um, all black on the background and all white inside the area where I want it to be opaque, which is, you know, my actor. So this is not good. Now we talked about the ability of using the screen gain, and my screen gain is set to 200. Notice that if I, or no, it's set to 108. If I slide that back, you'll see that I get a little bit better results in the background but then you can see how it starts to change the edges around the mask here. Okay? And you see how it's starting to lose parts of the head, the face, that sort of stuff. And if I go back to um, final result, you'll see that change. And we kind of already talked about this. You'll see that change in ways that are not good. Um, especially if I remember down here in the legs, you can see some of the chair and the grass through, uh, through the legs and stuff like that. So it's really not good. So we want to keep the screen gain down as low as possible. But if we do that, now we've got a lot of graininess and a lot of stuff up there. <clears throat> so one of the things that we can do is we can change, uh, we can cha try changing the screen balance, which helps a little bit. And what that does is essentially that changes the color of the green. Um, that it's looking for. And if you did the tester, it should work pretty well, but you can try shifting the screen balance. And you can see it's making some changes, but it's really not doing um, all that much. So I'm just going to kind of keep it back at, at uh, 50. Now we also have a whole bunch of other things that we can do, but really what we want to do is we want to go under the screen mat and we're going to play with these two things called clipping. It says clip black and clip white. And both of those things are really important. What happens is, <clears throat> basically, this is my black area, right? So if I start to slide this sideways, you can see how it automatically starts to increase what essentially is my shadows. And so by just sliding that to the right, I've essentially clipped the black. Now I went up to 33. That's pretty high. But that's because our green screen kind of stinks. It's got a lot of shadow areas to it. Um, it's got a lot of stuff that we want to get rid of. Then I can clip my white by sliding to the left. And you'll see how that kind of works. And that's going to increase this and make it a lot better. Um, and then if I go back to my final results, what we should notice now is a lot there's almost no transparency in the legs. There's no transparency around the edges of the hair. Um, this has really actually become a much better green screen right away. 
you also notice that the graininess that was up here in the um, in the sky area, okay, which was the top of the green screen, is also now gone. So those two, those two changes right there, the clip black and the clip white, are some of the most powerful things that, that you can do. Um, <clears throat> there are a couple other things that you can do after you've got the key light. Um, it's, if you go over to your effects presets and you go over to keying, um, there are a couple different things. Actually, I, I don't know where it is. If I go cleaner, there's a key cleaner. And so you can drag that right in and um, you can change the edge radius that this thing is looking to clean stuff for and you can take the strength down and stuff and it, it's supposed to kind of help clean up the edges a little bit um, which it kind of does. You can kind of see here uh, right along the back there so I can kind of increase the radius a little bit and just kind of play around with the settings um, and see how it's going to work on on the layer. I actually don't like it right now. I think that it's got. I've got a better, I've got a better selection without it. So I might change that. The other thing that we want to do is uh, what we call spill suppression. Uh, the advanced spill suppressor is really good. So we're going to take that, bring that over. If you're getting green tone to your objects then what you want to do is you want to like you know around the edges and stuff from reflected light you want to do a spill suppression and spill suppression just kind of takes care of that green uh, tone and you can go to ultra and then you can actually start changing some of the tolerances and playing with some of these things um, again I it doesn't look like it's making all that much of a difference here um, where it would really show up I guess is down in the legs and so let's take a look here because the, those uh, khaki pants would show up a lot of green and it's not really doing much. So basically my key light did a pretty good job right off the bat um, and I have a much cleaner green screen now. Now one of the other things that you need to worry about sometimes is um, notice that I still have pieces of the background that are showing up because they're not in the green screen. So that's probably the cabinets on the side or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that you can do, let me just take this off of the null parent here. I'm going to mess everything up, but I just want to show you this. So if I, if I just bring this down, uh, so let's see, you can see the floor and some other stuff in the, um, in the green screen. That's a real problem. I'm not moving much. So one of the things that I can do really easily here is create what we call a garbage mat or a garbage mask, okay? And it's basically a way of drawing a mask around something to keep it. So I can, uh, let's just turn off the key light here. And it's never a bad idea. Oh, there's a spill suppressor taking out all the green. That's kind of cool. All right, so let's turn that off too. So one of the things I can do is just take the pen tool here and to kind of help eliminate things. I mean, I don't really move much until I stand up, right? So I stand up and I go over like that, but I'm out of the frame by that point, so it doesn't really matter. But I can just click with the pen tool and kind of create what we call a garbage mat. And you can see how that gets rid of a lot of the stuff that's outside. That can also oftentimes help you do your green screen because now you're not worried about as much uh, on the sides. So turn the key light back on, spill suppression back on, and you can see how my, my mat is, is, I've gotten rid of all those extra things along the sides that were showing up because we don't have a full green screen room with the floor and everything. So that really helped a lot. Um, and then I can animate it if I need to, to uh, have, you know, if I, when I step up out of the frame, if I need to animate that, I can move the points if I need to. But I, I wouldn't, because I, the way I shot it, I move out of the frame. So does that make sense to you guys? So, I, I, you know, a couple of quick things. One, garbage mats. Garbage mats to get rid of the garbage that's in the corners, okay? That's number one. Number two, take your key light and you open up the screen mat settings and you work with the clip black and the clip white and that will allow you to make uh, a, a much better green screen selection. And then lastly, you can do a key cleaner 
and you can also do the spills and you should do the spill suppressor to get rid of any green that's reflecting up into your subjects skin tones hair uh, especially hair now see my in that in that shot my hair is very close cut so it doesn't have a lot of like what they call flyaways and stuff like that but if you're photographing somebody with like a mohawk or spiky hair or with curly hair or something like that you would have a much more difficult time of doing a, um, a green screen and that's where the um, the uh, the key cleaner can become really handy and the spill suppressor as well can become really handy to help you get around hair and stuff like that does that make sense okay um, there are even more methods of cleaning up your green screen but I think for most people these a uh, few simple ways will we'll take care of 99% of the problems that everybody is going to have. So let's get to work. <laughs>